Are there any personal explanations? Are there any reports to be tabled? Are there any notices of motion? Honourable Members, question time will conclude today at 11.17am. I call the Leader of the Opposition for his first question. Mr Speaker, with your indulgence, can I pass on my condolences to the former member for Stretton on behalf of the Opposition and indicate to his family how sad we are on his passing? Yeah. Mr Speaker, a question to the Premier. Queensland's population will boom over the next decade as we prepare to host the 2032 Olympic and Paralympic Games. Where is Labor's plan to protect our lifestyle, given the Treasurer's admission of a $4 billion infrastructure cut? I call the Premier. Uh, I thank uh, the, uh, the uh, Leader of the Opposition uh, for the question, Mr Speaker, and uh, I'll touch on a couple of things there. Uh, first of all, um, the uh, Minister for Sport and I were very pleased in the early hours of uh, last Friday morning to hear that great news out of the IOC executive that they are recommending Brisbane, Queensland to proceed to a full vote of the International Olympic Committee um, next month in July, around the 2021st. This is fantastic news, Mr Speaker. Uh, people are now stopping me in the street saying, are we really going to have the Olympics? It's suddenly resonating with people. Yeah, they are. They are, actually. Order. Order, members. And, and this oh, is... This member is, for Kiwana. And this is... Premier has the call. This is... <laughs> Order. I take that in a death. No one's stopping them in the street, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Speaker, as we know, uh, look, the Olympics present a great opportunity, and it's wonderful to secure that funding agreement uh, with the federal government, Mr. Speaker. And of course. That money will be profiled in budgets down the track, Mr Speaker, once we have uh, secured the uh, Olympics, depending on the final vote of the IOC. Uh, but, Mr Speaker, let me also make it very clear when it comes to infrastructure in this state. We have always maintained our $50 billion guarantee in our COVID economic recovery plan. It was $51.8 billion, Mr Speaker. And what we see, Mr Speaker, is over the life of a four-year plan, projects actually conclude. And one of those largest projects that will conclude over that four-year plan is, of course, the Cross River Rail. Oh, the one you cancelled. That's right. Is that the one you cancelled? That's right. Order. That's right. That's right, Mr Speaker. That's right. There was one side of the House that supported Cross River Rail, Mr Speaker, and building it, Mr Speaker, and the other side, they were silent. They were silent and they cut it, Mr Speaker. And as we know, Cross River Rail is absolutely needed to the Olympics. Absolutely needed. It's going to transform our city because on this side of the house we have a vision for the future, Mr Speaker. We have a vision that includes making sure that we have the infrastructure, that we have the, um, the hospital care, that we have the schools that are needed in our growth corridors, Mr Speaker, and that we look after all of Queenslanders no matter where they live. In our great state. time has expired. Uh, just going to reset the microphones. I call the Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, a question to the Premier. The Government says today's budget funds 500 new prison beds, but not the 1,500 new hospital beds the Australian Medical Association says are needed to stop the ramping crisis. Will the Premier put patients ahead of prisoners and deliver the health system Queensland deserves. Order. Before calling the Premier. Before calling the Premier, uh, members will listen to the question in silence. Premier, you have the call. Uh, Mr Speaker, I thank the Leader of the Opposition for the question. And not long to go now to the budget. Not long to go now, Mr Speaker. I can't wait, Mr Speaker, because 
Because I know, Mr Speaker, it's going to be a really good Labor Labor budget for the people of this state, Mr Speaker. And I also know, Mr Speaker, it's going to be a record health budget, Mr Speaker, because we acknowledge how important health is to Queenslanders, Mr Speaker. In fact, in fact we know how important it is that it's a Labor government uh, previously, Fogg and Smith, that built the Roma Hospital, Mr ah, Speaker. And guess the what? One. I'll take that in ejection. It was the Palaszczuk Labor government that completed the $117 million Roma yeah, Hospital yeah, yeah. that the Minister yeah, yeah. for Health Thanks, and I had the great privilege to join with the local member over there with the ribbon cutting, Mr Speaker. She was there, I invited her over. She came for the tour to admire this great facility, Mr Speaker, because we know how important it is, no matter where the families live across our state, to have good quality health system, Mr Speaker. And Mr Speaker, the man who sat around the cabinet table with Campbell Newman did the cuts to the health staff, Mr Speaker. We had to restore the health services that they sat Savagely cut, Mr. Speaker. Campbell oh, Newman's apprentice. He's over there, Mr. Speaker. You know, the whole team back together. Campbell Newman's coming back to the executive. Lauren Springbok's coming back to the executive. Well, that was called the Newman government leader of the opposition. That was called the Newman government, Mr. Speaker. Order. Embarrassed, and and you know they should hang their heads and shame this afternoon. They don't have long to go to hear the record health budget, Mr. Speaker. And you know what? It's also a record education budget as well, Mr. Speaker. Also a record education budget. So look, I urge those opposite to take a good, long, hard look at themselves, Mr. Speaker. And we look forward to the leader of the opposition's reply. We'd like to know. We'd like to know what they're going to spend money on. They're good at cutting. They're good at cutting, they're good at sacking, Mr Speaker, and they're good at selling, Mr Speaker. Oh, we can't wait. We cannot wait for this afternoon. And I'm absolutely very proud of the budget that the Treasurer will hand down for this government. Yeah. Speaker. I call the member for Thurngower. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is of the Premier and Minister for Trade. Will the Minister, uh, sorry, will the Premier update the House on the importance of major events in Queensland's economic recovery plan. Uh, I call the Premier. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. And I, thank, I thank the member for Thurungawa for that question, Mr Speaker. And I know how supportive he was last, uh, last, uh, last Wednesday night of the whole week. So it's been such a big week, Mr Speaker. Last Wednesday night, uh, when, when he, he, he was calling out Queenslander very loudly, I'm quite sure people in Charters Towers heard it. Uh, but, Mr Speaker, events are really important as part of our economic recovery. And I think what, what was shown with the State of Origin being held in Townsville is that regional cities can host major yeah. events, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. The huge buzz in the town. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to walk down Flinders Street with the local members, and there were people that had come from all around Queensland, Mr. Speaker. We met we met people from Woodjul Woodjul. We met people who'd driven up from Mackay. We uh, met people from Mount Isa, Mr. Speaker. This was fantastic for Townsville. Um, and the winner was Townsville. Although, although the team you know, didn't quite get there, they've got two more, two more, two more goes. Two more goes. It doesn't matter. The winner was Townsville. And we, we wish them all the very best for the next game at the end of this month at Suncorp. But getting back to Townsville, it goes back to you know, the very first infrastructure announcement that, our, that we made when we were in opposition was to build that Townsville Stadium, Mr Speaker. And I'm absolutely delighted that when you go there now to see that most beautiful stadium, I want to also commend uh, Minister De Brenny, who was Public Works Minister. I think you were up there nearly every month making sure that it was uh, being delivered on time, uh, Mr Speaker. But to have such a critical piece of infrastructure um, has really enlivened that city, Mr Speaker. And of course, uh, Townsville will also have the opportunity to host events as part of the Olympics as well, and I think showcasing that. And let's hope that the NRL looks at having even more events 
uh, hopefully in the future in Townsville as well. Uh, Mr Speaker, my understanding is that um, that there was a lot of um, uh, hotel, uh, all the hotels were booked out. I think Magnetic Island was booked out as well, so it brought a lot of income into the uh, the economy. Sorry, twenty-two and a half thousand bed nights, um, which was fantastic. But also, to it was you know all of the small businesses, the food trucks, the restaurants, the cafes. Everyone benefited from having that state of origin, and I do thank uh, the Deputy Premier and the Treasurer for also supporting um, the investment to secure the state of origin up there, Mr Speaker. So, Mr Speaker, um, also too, it also was an opportunity to showcase uh, Townsville across Australia with over, my understanding is over 2.7 million people tuning in to watch the Premier's state of origin. Premier's time has expired. I call the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Uh, Mr Speaker, a question to the Treasurer. The Treasurer says his $4 billion infrastructure budget cut is caused by not building Cross River Rail twice. Where is Labor's plan for the next major congestion? Uh, De Deputy uh, Premier, you warned under standing orders. Questions will be heard in silence. Uh, please continue your question, Member. The Treasurer says his $4 billion infrastructure budget cut is caused by not building Cross River Rail twice. Where is Labor's plan for the next major congestion busting project, or are commuters consigned to sit in traffic forever? I call the Treasurer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank, uh, I thank, I thank the member uh, for his question, Mr. Speaker, and I am very pleased. I am very pleased to report to the House that in our budget. The government's budget that I will deliver this afternoon, it will contain a $52.2 billion infrastructure spend over the next four years. And, Speaker, unlike the members opposite, we are a party that keeps our promises. A $50 billion in infrastructure guarantee, Speaker, a $50 billion infrastructure guarantee that we made to the people of Queensland when we delivered our infrastructure uh, economic recovery plan. We locked it in our budget last year. We continue to deliver it now. And I'll tell you what a cut is, Speaker. I'll tell you what a cut is. A cut, an infrastructure cut, is when you cut a project, like the LNP cut Cross River Rail. And so I challenge all members opposite. You tell me what project this government has cut, and, and you will find one. Treasurer will direct his comments one. through the chair. Speaker, this this comes from an opposition. This comes from an opposition that cut the infrastructure funding in this state in every single budget they delivered when they were in government. Speaker, every single budget. A party that never even got within cooe of $50 billion over four years, Speaker. And not only did they cut infrastructure, they absolutely revelled in it. What did, what did the member for Clayfield say in Budget Paper 3 in 2012? The capital program will be smaller than in previous years, reflecting the determination of the government to restore the state's financial position. So they were willing to sacrifice jobs and infrastructure and projects across Queensland. Member for Toowoomba South. Queensland. They were willing to sacrifice that for their fiscal position, Speaker, and that's something this government will never do, Speaker. That is something we will never do. So you will see projects announced today, Speaker, across the length and breadth of our state, because the people of our state know they can Order. to deliver the infrastructure a growing state needs. And, Speaker, it would not surprise you. You'd probably be the person least surprised that the budget last year is the different to the budget this year. The four-year profile changes. Cross River Rail comes off in 24-25, and the budget next year will be different again, Mr Speaker. That's because we build. The LNP cuts, Labor delivers, the LNP dithers, Mr Speaker, and we have an effective budget approach to delivering infrastructure, to creating jobs, Mr Speaker. More than 45,000 jobs will be supported by our capital program over, the, over this financial year, Speaker. That's something that all members of the House Treasurer's have time has expired. 
I call the member for Jordan. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is of the Premier and Minister for Trade. Will the Premier update the House on how the Palaszczuk government is delivering for the Jordan electorate and the increased demand for services from the growing West Morton region? I call the Premier. Well, thank you very much, Mr Speaker, and I thank the member for Jordan for that question, Mr Speaker. And I was absolutely delighted to join her where we announced a great partnership with MARTA to build a 174-bed public hospital out in Springfield, Mr Speaker. Uh, when we're talking about growing uh, growth corridors, we need to make sure that we have the infrastructure that is needed. And West Morton is one of the fastest growing corridors uh, in terms of uh, the health demographics. And we're absolutely delighted to announce that funding that's going to mean that people will be able to get those local services close to home. It's exactly what they need and it's exactly what we are going to be delivering for them. Uh, Mr Speaker, it's also going to mean the jobs that go with it as well, those frontline service uh, personnel, and it was absolutely wonderful. And that's what I love about going uh, to different hospitals and meeting people right across our state as you get to hear firsthand their experiences. And the people who are currently working in the MARTA, a lot of them live close by. They live within the region, so they're able to work there and then go home to their families uh, in the afternoons and in the evenings, Mr Speaker. And as I said uh, earlier, uh, our government will deliver today a record health budget, making sure that Queenslanders get the services that they need, yeah. that the camp capital infrastructure is there to cater for the growing needs of our state, and to make sure that communities, even in the most remote parts of our state, are also getting the infrastructure that is needed as well. And I think we've demonstrated that, that we're a government for all of Queenslanders by building that brand new state-of-the-art hospital in Roma, Mr Speaker. The expansion of uh, King Arroy is uh, nearing completion. I look forward to going to King Arroy in the near future to open, to open that, that hospital as well, Mr Speaker, because it doesn't matter where you live, we will deliver the services that are required. Um, Mr Speaker, this is a stark contrast, and I draw on what the Treasurer said earlier as well. It is a stark contrast from those others. I sat in this House for three years and listened to the member for Clayfield and listened to former Premier Campbell Newman and watched the decimation of our health system, Mr Speaker, the destruction of our regional communities across Queensland. I sat here for three years each and every day. I travelled the state. I listened to what was happening. I met the people Order. who were sacked, Mr Speaker. They attacked Tate. They attacked the medical profession. They attacked the lawyers, Mr Speaker. They cut schools, Mr Speaker. That is the record of the Newman government and those who learned nothing, Mr Speaker. When I took office, I promised a better way, Mr Speaker, and that is exactly what we are delivering, a better way for this state, Mr Speaker. And Queenslanders have put their faith in our government by delivering us an increased majority. Mr Speaker, the Premier's time has expired. I call the member for Kiwana. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question to the Premier. I refer to Labor's $4 billion infrastructure budget cut and ask, where is Labor's plan to build passenger heavy rail for the Sunshine Coast? Point of order, Mr Speaker. Uh, sorry, what is your point of order? This is the third time in a row members of the opposition have made an unsubstantiated claim about what's in the budget. Uh, there is no $4 billion budget cut. They're making it up. Uh, so, uh, maybe for Kiwana, the Deputy Premier is seeking authentication of the question asked. Uh, so I do ask that if you can provide uh, some basis for the question. Thank you, Mr Speaker. In your ruling, I table a copy of uh, an article from AAP uh, directly quoting the Treasurer where he says the budget's gone from 56 to 52 billion. That's a $4 billion cut. Thank you. Um, I think uh, the, the terminology uh, cut is not used in that. Uh, that is a interpretation. However, I will allow the question um, in the spirit of it being budget day. Um, and, of course, the Treasurer or the Premier uh, in any questions have the opportunity to refute such a claim, which is why I will allow it. I call the Premier. 
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member for uh, Kiwana for the question, Mr. Speaker. And uh, as uh, those opposite know, it's the Palaszczuk government that is delivering for the Sunshine Coast, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Yeah. We're delivering the new schools, Mr. Speaker. We're going to deliver the infrastructure, Mr. Speaker. And two new members. And that's right. I take that interjection. <laughs> and we've delivered two new members, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. Yeah. Two new wonderful members to this house, Mr. Speaker, that are working very hard, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I can advise uh, the House that uh, the Commonwealth and the Queensland Government have committed $550.8 million towards the initial stage of the Beer Burham to Nambour rail upgrade. The upgrade will increase capacity, improve reliability, reduce travel times for passengers and freight in the growing Sunshine Coast region. The upgrade will be completed in stages to deliver community benefits while investigating funding for future stages. The funding for Stage 1 has been confirmed and construction is expected to begin in early 2022. Stage 1 will deliver three new bridges, expanded three park and ride facilities and duplicate the section of rail track between Beer, Burham and Beerwa. A new bus interchange will also be created on the eastern, eastern side of the Landsborough Station. We are also listening to the needs of the community through a range of activities as we complete the detailed design for stage one and gather input for future stages, Mr. C Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, as uh, the member for Kwana also talked about, um, you know, rail, I've got to talk about the trains, Mr. Speaker. And in fact, in fact, Mr. Yep. Speaker, where are we going to make the trains? Mr. Speaker, where are we going to make those trains? Yeah. Mr. Speaker, let's have our manufacturing here to make sure that we deliver the long-term secure jobs that Queenslanders need. That's right. We'll even fix those up. But you know, it's member for Kiwana. <laughs> member for Kiwana will cease his objections. Member order, order. Pause the clock. No idea. Pause the clock. Premier, resume your seat. Please resume your seat. Member for Kiwana, Minister for Transport and Main Roads, you're both warned under standing orders. Bickering across the chamber, quarrelling is not acceptable. Premier, you have the call. Do you have anything further to add? Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And yes, we're also, as we said, we're building the Cross River Rail and we're building the three new tra train stations down on the Gold Coast as well, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, we know how important it is. Transport is for our growing state, and it is our government that is going to continue to deliver, continue to deliver for the people of this great state. Member for Budroom is warned under standing orders. Comments will be directed through the chair. Probably anything further to add? Thank you. I call the member for Cooper. Mr. Speaker, uh, my question is to the Deputy Premier. Can the Deputy Premier update the House on how the government is supporting projects that create jobs and safeguard Queenslanders' health? And is he aware of any alternatives? I call the Deputy Premier. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member for Cooper for her question. I know, like all on this side of the House, she is committed to creating jobs for Queenslanders, jobs in our existing industries and jobs in the industries of the future. And that's why uh, I was really pleased, uh, and I am pleased to advise the House today, that the first recipient of the Palaszczuk government's flagship Queensland Jobs Fund will be the Translational Research Institute at Wollongabba. Uh, the Treasurer and I were joined by Professor Ian Fraser to announce that we will build the Translational Manufacturing Institute, Mr Speaker, with a $20 million investment from the Queensland Jobs Fund. Our scientists at TRI are already inventing the treatments of the future and the vaccines of the future, and this investment will allow them to manufacture them here instead of sending them overseas. We will, we will finally realise a local domestic vaccine manufacturing capability. TMI at TRI will support our start-ups will allow us to do advanced commercialisation. Professor Fraser spoke passionately about how in the past Queensland innovations had to be sent overseas for clinical trials and for manufacturing, and we are determined 
that the Gardasil of the future should be manufactured here in Queensland, just as it was invented here in Queensland. In the process, we'll create 500 jobs over the next uh, 10 years, Mr Speaker. Our biomedical sector continues to grow. It already employs 10,000 Queenslanders across 1,200 different companies. And we've been saying throughout this pandemic that we need to make more of our medical equipment here, more of our treatments here. We need to be able to make vaccines here. But there has been no progress whatsoever from the Morrison government to advance additional manufacturing capability in Queensland. So you know, those opposite might not like it. We don't like it either, Mr Speaker, because Australia and Queensland, we should be able to make our own vaccines here. We shouldn't be running around the world begging for their leftovers. We should be able to make them here, deliver them here, so that Queenslanders can get the vaccines uh, that they need, including for COVID, Mr Speaker. The Palaszczuk government is acting to create jobs and ensure we have sovereign manufacturing capability here in Queensland. I call the member for Mudruba. Thank you, Mr Speaker. A question to the Health Minister. I refer to Labor's $4 billion infrastructure budget reduction and ask, where is Labor's plan to build a level five hospital for Bundaberg as promised by the member for Bundaberg? I call the member for Health. Call the Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I thank the member uh, for her question. She might want to ask her colleagues uh, the answer because they've written to me and already been provided with answers on this. But I'm happy to uh, say it in uh, this House, Mr Speaker. Uh, we have committed to level five services at that hospital. We have oh, yes, 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 uh, those on the other side, again, want to play semantics and politics. We have said that we oh, semantics. That's what we will deliver. In relation to this claim of the cut, let me just try to explain, as the Treasurer has, as the Premier has, as the Deputy Premier has, this is how budget time. I'll take that interjection. It's probably not worth it, but we've got to keep trying. We have to keep trying, Treasurer, because the rest of Queensland understands it's it's about Correct. time the LNP Correct. try to understand how budgets work. How Each we? year the budget moves a year. So when you talk about four years, when you look at the forwards, strangely enough, that four-year plan changes each year as you move forward. I know. It's amazing. And you know, the figures change as you move along. Order. And, and, and under the Palaszczuk government, that forward plan includes the completion of the Cross River Well. Now, it wouldn't appear at all on their budget papers in going up. So it wouldn't be there at all, Mr Speaker. In fact, those opposite made a, a virtue of cutting uh, in their budgets, where in 2012, the member for Clayfield wrote in his budget paper three, you just want to listen to this, budget paper three, that quote... Pause the clock. Member for Bundaberg, Leader of the Opposition, you're having a long distance <laughs> it's very quarrel very across fun. the chamber. <laughs> you're both warned under standing orders. The Minister for Health has the call. That is back Thank then. you, Mr Speaker. And I, I just want the Opposition to be able to hear this. So in 2012, the Member for Clayfield, the Treasurer, at the time wrote in Budget Paper 3, quote, the capital program will be smaller than in previous years, reflecting the determination of the government to restore the state's financial position. End quote. They made a virtue of the oh, They made a virtue. So and press release after press release. Member for Nanango. Cutting skilling Queenslanders for work, for cutting public service, despite their claim the public service had nothing to do with the government. government. Mr Speaker, they can spend the whole of question time getting up and making claims about cuts. But the fact is, those who are reading the budget, the budget papers now understand how it works. They understand how to read budget papers. The people of Queensland understand this. I've answered Member the question Fernando of is warned Fernando. understanding You should have listened in the first five seconds. Order. Pause the clock. Member for Mudrabar will cease her interjections. I've been listening to the response, and my uh, 
judgment is that the uh, minister has answered the question, or at least has attempted to answer that question. So you will cease your interjections, or you will be warned. Uh, Minister for Health, you have nine seconds remaining. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, we will deliver on all of our election commitments in health and we will deliver a record health budget under this Treasurer and under this Premier, because that's what good Labor government is. Mr Speaker. time has expired. I call the member for Aspley. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is of the Treasurer and Minister for Investment. Will the Treasurer please update the House on the Palaszczuk government's plan for the capital budget? Sorry, member, your microphone. Thank you. Sorry, uh, my question is of the Treasurer and Minister for Investment. Will the Treasurer please update the House on the Palaszczuk government's plan for the capital budget, including plans to finance capital investment into the future? And is the Treasurer aware of any other approach? I call the Treasurer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank the member for Aspley for his question. And of course, uh, our economic recovery plan locked in a $50 billion guarantee for infrastructure for Queensland, in fact, $51.8 billion, Speaker. And we were elected on the basis of a $51.8 billion guarantee. As we said at the election, we would borrow to fund capital and to fund recurrent deficits. At press conference after press conference during the election, the Premier and I were asked, often asked about funding, and we always answered honestly, how would you fund it? And we said from borrowings. We made no apologies because our economy had been smashed by COVID-19. Unfortunately, Speaker, our plans to borrow to support the economy have been opposed by the LNP every single step of the way. Now, who could forget the Leader of the Opposition's first budget reply? He said we were borrowing $28 billion too much and that we should only borrow $4 billion. He went on to whinge and complain about debt, saying we had rolled the dice on debt. But on Sunday, Speaker, up in Rockhampton, the Leader of the Opposition told Seven News he now wants, quote, to borrow at record rates to fund infrastructure. Speaker, what is going on? The Leader of the Opposition and an emu park epiphany. The Mount Archer moment. A conversion on the road to Rockhampton. $28 billion is not enough, Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition wants us to borrow more. But fast forward up to yesterday, Speaker, when he was asked by the media in Brisbane, he was invited by journalists to repeat his call to borrow more. The League of the Opposition would not do it. So the Leader of the Opposition Order. racks it up. Oh, the Deputy Whips up with the questions. The Leader of the Opposition racks it up in regional Queensland, but won't back it up in South East Queensland. That's because, Speaker, everyone knows the Leader of the Opposition is a phony. He will say anything he needs to say to any audience in Queensland, Speaker. Can't the LNP point of order, hates Mr. it. Uh, the clock. I can't stand it. Pause the clock. Resume his seat. What is your point of order? Is unparliamentary language and ask him to withdraw. Uh, Look, I, I didn't find that the uh, language was unparliamentary that I heard, but if you can please uh, please let me know what word you found. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's within it is within the uh, the realms. Um, Treasurer, uh, you have the call. Thank you, Speaker. The LNP hate debt. They can't stand it. It makes them sick when they see the government borrowing to support infrastructure and jobs. Speaker, the LNP, the LNP would rather see would rather see the economy destroyed than borrow to support it. Speaker, and we saw that in their costings in the election, the fake Radfield scheme. Order. No money for that, Speaker. The Bruce Highway hoax. What an absolute con job that was flushed out right at the election e on the election eve with the most shameful costings in the history of this state. Speaker, and of course, their costings themselves would have demonstrated this if they had come into government. 3,500 fewer nurses, 3,000 fewer teachers, 340 fewer teacher aides and 1,600 fewer police. This Leader of the Opposition is a complete phony. He cannot be trusted. What he said cannot be believed. He will say anything to anyone for uh, his own political purposes. Treasurer's time has expired. Um, Treasurer, can I ask? Uh, I'm going to ask that you do withdraw that word uh, simply because it was directed at an individual, not speaking about a policy or another uh, specific Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I withdraw. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I call the member for Toowoomba North and welcome back to the Parliament. Mr Speaker, a question to the Health Minister. 
I refer to Labor's four billion infrastructure budget reduction and ask, where is the funding for the Toowoomba Hospital? I call the Minister for Health. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I thank the member for his question. Stand by and wait to see the budget papers. Mr Speaker. I call the member for Ipswich West. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is of the Minister for Education, Minister for Industrial Relations and Minister for Racing. Will the Minister advise the House on how the Palaszczuk Government is delivering new schools and is she aware of any alternative approaches? I call the Minister for Education. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the member. Um, if there's one thing on this side of the House we love doing, is opening new schools. Yeah, and yeah. we have opened 18 of those since we've been elected. And they're just not any school. You go to any one of those schools, Speaker, that we have opened up, and they are extraordinarily world first class yeah, yeah. facilities. Yeah. And this budget will invest a further $1 billion around that amount of money to deliver 10 new classrooms. And I can't wait for this budget to be, sorry, schools, 10 new schools, correction, and I can't wait for the budget to be delivered today so we can start working on those 10 new schools and delivering them just like we've done with the 18 on time and on budget. And we're not talking when you go there, they are amazing. The Fortitude Valley School, the Brisbane South State Secondary College. I know a journalist recently visited that school and they were absolutely gobsmacked of what is being delivered in these facilities. Takes the Foxwell one down at Coomera, an absolutely outstanding new school, just like Calliope is in Gladstone, just like the schools we opened in Palmview and that new secondary school will be opening very school. Outstanding special school, an outstanding primary school in Palmview in some of the fastest growing areas. Take Baringa and Caloundra. They're wonderful schools we've opened up there, both of them. And you can take Mountain Creek, and we were out there the other day seeing these schools growing and fantastic. And then, of course, there's Mango Hill. What a school out at Mango Hill. And, Speaker, I'm just touching um, a drop in the bucket when it comes to announcing them. In addition, we've announced $541 million in relation to new classrooms and new buildings, and they are outstanding. I don't think there is an electorate and throughout the whole of Queensland on both sides of the House that have not gained by some investment in Marucci their schools. Doll. It has been absolutely incredible. And an interesting piece of information when we talk about investment, $541 million is actually more than the money of the entire education infrastructure budget in 2014 under those opposite. Their entire infrastructure budget for schools was $538 million. That was it. And we're spending for that just on new classrooms in this state. So when you compare the policies of this government and those drive around the schools, have a look at what is being delivered, have a look at the buildings, have a look at the new schools. They are incredibly outstanding facilities. We are proud of our investment in education infrastructure. We will continue the good work and not cut, sack and sell. Mr Speaker. I call the member for Coomera. Mr Speaker, my, my question is to the Premier. After more than six years of planning, with no business case and no contract signed, when will Gold Coasters finally be able to drive on the second M1, also known as the Coomera Connector? I call the Premier. Oh, thank you, Mr Speaker. I thank the member for the question. But we are in, um, we've been working with the federal government on this um, at length. And construction starts this year. Mr Speaker. Order. I'll wait for silence, members. I call the member for Pine Rivers. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Health and Emergency Ambulance Services. Can the minister outline how the Palaszczuk government is making health care more accessible for Queenslanders and describe any challenges currently confronting our health system? I call the Minister for Health. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I thank the member for Pine Rivers for her question, because she understands the importance of investing in not just capital infrastructure, but our people. 
our health workforce. And I want to acknowledge the work that our health workforce are doing right now, particularly around testing and vaccinations. We are having record numbers of vaccinations. And it's our health workers that are stepping up and doing this right yeah. across the state. And I want to yeah. acknowledge the tremendous effort that they've um, been giving each and every day. Mr Speaker, we're very proud of our health record in the Palaszczuk government. Since 2015, uh, we've already increased our bedding by uh, 1,137 additional beds. And of course, we will continue to invest and bring more beds online, and not just with the funding we've recently announced, but also uh, with the budget that is uh, due to be handed down later today. But, Mr Speaker, I'm really concerned that you know, while those opposite keep asking about you know, delays in surgery and, and concerns about patients' welfare, what they're not talking about publicly is what the federal government's doing. And what the federal government? Oh, and they laugh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, they order. They laugh. They always say, "Stop blaming the federal government." Well, there is no one else to blame for this. The federal government is attempting to sneak through more than 900 changes to the Medicare benefit Jai. schedule Jai. with a minimal public consultation. These changes are due to come in on 1 July. They've just been released. These changes are significant, Mr. Speaker. They impact 594 orthopaedic surgery items, 150 general surgery items, 188 cardiac surgery items. These changes could create thousands of dollars in additional out-of-pocket costs for Queenslanders seeking medical assistance from private hospitals. And when they can't afford it, where are they going to go? To our public health That's system. Right. They will rely on us to provide these services. The national president of the AMA noted these changes will put significant financial and operational risk on health insurers and private hospitals. We simply don't know what the rebates from the funds will be, as they haven't had the time to prepare and release them in advance, including for surgeries booked for next month. Surgeries booked for next month, and they don't even know what they're going to charge and how much those patients are going to be out of pocket Shame. and whether those patients Shame. are going to end up having to cancel because they can't afford that surgery. And this is on top of what the federal government did, the Morrison government, back in November 2018. Patients were left out of pocket. Spinal surgeries were delayed. Doctors couldn't provide patients with informed financial consent about potential gap fees. Those changes involve replacing 70 spinal surgery items and 60 new items. But this one is 900 items out of 5,700 Medicare rebates. Mr Speaker, where are those on the upper side? The Minister's time has expired. I call the member for Hill. Mr Speaker, my question without notice is to the Minister for Agriculture and Fisheries. Mr Speaker, there are huge concerns the Spanish mackerel fishery will close in 2020 because of flaws in the stock assessment model used by Fisheries Queensland. Considering the commercial fishing annual quota has never come close, been reached in 17 years, will the minister intervene to ensure any decisions on the fishery will not be based on false data? I call the Minister for Agricultural Industry Development and Fisheries. Thank you, Speaker. And I thank the member for uh, Hill for his uh, question. And no doubt when the Palaszczuk government introduced the sustainable fisheries policy, it was couched in a manner to make sure we have a sustainable fisheries into the future, yeah. not just for our children but for our grandchildren. Yeah. Uh, speaker, many, on, certainly on this side, would recall the position the opposition took on this matter. and They, they, wanted, to, uh, they wanted to allow black marketers a five-day holiday to allow their produce to be sought and, and uh, delivered elsewhere, uh, a five-day holiday, so, so they get rid of that sustainable fisheries that we're trying to protect on this side. But when it comes to Spanish mackerel, I can advise the member, Speaker, that the fisheries uh, working group was established and met for the first time on the 17th and the 18th of May this year. So uh, they, they discussed the status of the fisheries, reviewed the latest stock assessment and the results of that, and they discussed the possible management options and discussed the timeline for implementation of both the harvest strategy and the required management changes. The most recent meeting uh, communique is available online, so I, I, I 
you know, re request those people that have an interest in it to go online and have a look at the uh, results of the, the uh, working groups. And the working group will continue to meet over the next year to develop a harvest strategy and consider management options to rebuild the East Coast Spanish mackerel stocks to sustainable levels ahead of 1 July 2022 fishing uh, season. So I'm advising Member there for Gregory. No changes. There's no ch changes to the decision on management change to this fishery. So the first step will be to finalise and publish the stock assessment, which is being independently peer reviewed. I have every faith in the fisheries uh, department speaker in terms of what they do in regards to uh, assessment of stock assessment right throughout our waters in Queensland. And in this particular fishery sector, I have all faith in them making sure they make the right decisions. But that is a matter for the working group to assist in advising the government on where we go to make sure we do have a sustainable fisheries policy now and into the future. So the next step it will be to look at management options to rebuild that stock. This, there will be an opportunity for public uh, con consultation on those matters Keep before any decisions go. made. And the following uh, working group input, the public consultation is planned to take place in late 2021 allowing the consideration of feedback and a decision on management action to be made ahead of the 1 July 2022 fishing season. I'm advised also that no changes, no changes to recreational fishing have been made and will not be made until there's appropriate consultation, not only with the public, but also myself as the Minister, uh, delivered through the consultative working group that are well established with broad sectors right across the, the area of this particular fisheries. I call the member for Redlands. Speaker, my question is of the Minister for Transport and Main Roads. Can the Minister update the House on what the government is doing to bolster Queensland Rail's train drivers and controllers as our population booms and we get ready for Cross River Rail? I call the Minister for Transport and Main Roads. Oh, thank you, Speaker. And I thank the member for Redlands, who is a renowned supporter of rail in this state, Mr Speaker. Uh, we know how crucial our train drivers, our guards, our, our train controllers are to our network, Mr Speaker. Uh, I was uh, visiting recently uh, the, uh, the train control centre at Bowen Hills uh, after, of course, our railway sector has been in excellent shape. World-leading uh, pandemic response by this government has not only protected Queensland's health but protected jobs and jobs in the rail sector, Mr Speaker. Uh, 88 per cent of people moving to Queensland is a vote of confidence in this state, Mr Speaker, uh, and we've got a plan for the future. And I was very pleased to be at the, uh, the Train Control Centre because uh, to meet some of our new trainees in uh, train control. And for the first time, I'm pleased to say we have a majority of women in the new train control course. Six of the new trainees are women out of 11, the first time in Queensland Rail history. And I was very pleased to meet with Kayla, who one of those trainees who is really keen, a broad level of people uh, in terms of background experience coming in, some from the airline industry, uh, getting new jobs, getting into a fantastic system, Mr Speaker. Now, we all know that we invest here in the Palaszczuk Labor government in Queensland made trains in expanding our network. We've got 810 more services now than ever offered under those, Mr Speaker, uh, and we're seeing uh, that kind of level of commitment to manufacturing the customer service. We, what we don't see, Mr Speaker, is the scorched earth, blowtorch blow policies of those opposite when they were in and what they did to Queensland Rail. They, they sacked people. That we saw the number of train drivers drop by 48, Mr Speaker. Ah, oh, there we go, the minister, the member for Chatsworth, one of the gang, one of the gang popping up uh, here, Mr Pause Speaker. the clock. Uh, it's becoming a bit of a habit, I mean, for Chatsworth, your use of uh, titles uh, is not appropriate. Uh, you're warned under standing orders. The minister has the call. Thank you, Mr Speaker. You won't see us out with the, the, with the strong choices, flamethrowers like they had, Mr Speaker, scorching earth everywhere they go. We saw infrastructure cut under every single LNP budget. Cut. 2012, 2013, 2014 by those opposite, and what we're seeing is 50 per cent more infrastructure funding here by this government. We saw the Q-trip allocation of just over $18 billion by the LNP. It's $26.9 billion, Mr Speaker, in the financial year from the budget in, in December. And I'm not going to uh, steal any of the Treasurer's thunder, and there's going to be a lot of it, Mr Speaker, but I can say the Q-trip is going to be up, Mr Speaker. And that's the, that's the commitment of this Palaszczuk Labor Government. Six, six record Q-trip budgets 
uh, out of seven by this government. That's our commitment to infrastructure. And to hear Mr Flipflop over there, the member for Broadwater, says we've got too much borrowing. Six months later, oh, we, want, we need more borrowing. You know, he was praising on social media health staff. But you know, less than a year ago, he was, he was abusing them for being punch-drunk bureaucrats, Mr Speaker. Mr Flipflop over there, at least you knew what the member for Nanango stood for. I look forward to next month to seeing him change his mind, give us something else. The Minister's speak. time has expired. Um, member for Theodore, after I tried to give you some guidance, uh, your warned understanding orders as well. I call the member for Maywa. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister for Energy, Renewables and Hydrogen. Early estimates say it will cost $200 million and take a whole year to repair the busted C4 turbine at the Calide Sea Power Station, which is half-owned by multinational corporation Intergen. Given coal is increasingly expensive and unreliable, will the minister rule out wasting public money rebuilding the turbine? I call the minister. Well, there you have it, uh, Speaker. Uh, the Greens political party has called for the sacking of workers in Queensland's electricity companies. There you have it. Well done, well done to the LNP over there who facilitated uh, that question, Mr. Speaker. When they ran out of questions. When the Leader of the Opposition, Mr Speaker, ran out of questions on the budget. I call the Minister. Mr Speaker, again the Greens political party lining up with the LNP, of course, are only focused, who are only focused on nuclear and gas, Mr Speaker. Between the Greens political party and the LNP over here, nobody in Queensland knows what either of them stand for, Mr Speaker, except selling Queensland workers down the river, Mr Speaker. And here we have it, on record again, calling for the workers at Calide to lose their jobs, Mr Speaker. That is shameful, Mr Speaker. That is shameful, Mr Speaker. On the day that that explosion happened, Mr Speaker, the Palaszczuk government committed job security to those workers there, Mr Speaker, and we continue to do that. And just last week and this morning we made it very clear, Mr Speaker, about the importance of diversification of our energy sector, Mr Speaker. That's why the Premier and the Deputy Premier under the Queensland Jobs Fund have committed $2 billion to a renewable energy and hydrogen jobs fund, Mr Speaker, for companies like CS Energy, Stanwell and others, Clean Co, to be able to invest in their businesses, Mr Speaker, to ensure that they can deliver a diversified future, Mr Speaker. Everybody in this state understands that thermal generation plays a significant role in making sure that we have dispatchable energy, Mr Speaker. We are not about to come into this place or any other forum, Mr Speaker, and, in, and uh, uh, being encouraged by the Greens uh, to sack workers at Calide, Mr Speaker. Right. Now, I can update the House as well, Mr Speaker, that uh, uh, in relation uh, to that incident, in relation to that incident, I've been advised that the CS Energy uh, Board has determined its arrangements into the investigation uh, of that incident, including that it will be uh, led by forensic engineer uh, Dr Sean uh, Brady. So he'll be working alongside the, uh, uh, the uh, workplace uh, health and safety uh, and the Australian energy market operator to conduct an investigation in that. But, Mr Speaker, not only will we not see those workers sacked, Mr Speaker, we'll make sure that their health and safety is put first, Mr Speaker. It's important that these investigations be allowed uh, to run their course with integrity, with integrity, something the member for Maywa might not know a lot about, Mr Speaker. And we'll be patient. We'll be patient in awaiting their findings. In the meanwhile, in the meantime, Mr Speaker. I can confirm this. I can confirm this that work is well underway to restoring uh, the Calide power station to operation, Mr. Speaker. Because we think, we think that those workers play a valuable role in delivering cle uh, uh, cleaner and cheaper electricity, Mr. Speaker, and that supports our job creation agenda, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we will always stand by the workers in the energy industry, Mr. Speaker. I call the member for Harvey Bay. Mr Speaker, my question is of the Minister for Employment and Small Business and Minister for Training and Skills Development. Can the Minister please update the House on how Skilling Queensland for Work is helping to skill disadvantaged Queenslanders to get into jobs and if there are any alternatives? Before calling the Minister, I just need to reset the microphones yet again. I call the Minister. 
Uh, thank you, Speaker, and I thank the member for his question and also for his passion for skills and training and for skilling Queenslanders for work in particular, or SKU as we call it. And in fact, it's fantastic that there's almost 570 people from his electorate who've been supported by the program. Um, speaker, since we reinstated this program in 2015, it has supported nearly 60,000 disadvantaged Queenslanders. Yeah, it is yeah. so successful that 73 per cent of its participants go on to okay. jobs or further training. That's yeah, almost 37 7,000 Queenslanders, Speaker. Yeah, yeah. But, Speaker, the statistics aren't the whole story. It's actually the human story of this program that That's really right. speaks to Absolutely. us and about giving people a hand right. up. And it's almost impossible to go to a SKU graduation without being really deeply impacted by the stories that participants tell about the way it changes their life. And I met a young man called Cody on the weekend who'd um, done a six-month SKU course, and he's now started a four-year contract with an IT company that has clients including Centrelink. And he said it's completely transformed his life. He said, I used to be on Centrelink and now I work for them, Speaker. What a great story, which is why I was so delighted to be with the Treasurer and the member for Nudgee the other day when we announced $320 million going to SKU and that it's going to be made permanent, Speaker. Mr Speaker, um, I had to do a bit of a double take when I heard the uh, Leader of the Opposition, his comments on the announcement when he said it was a good start. And I thought, oh, uh, oh. Uh, because Speaker, I thought, did he mean a good start for a program we can cut if we ever get back into government. Because although they love being in photos with SKU participants here, there's just one of the member for Ujuru the other day with a, a participant. And the fact is, when they got into government, Speaker, they cut this program almost as soon as their feet hit the ground, Speaker. And, and it, go figure. I mean, why would you cut a program that is one of the most successful of its kind in the country? But that's what they did, Speaker. And then going to the election, I thought, OK. They might see the error of their way, Speaker. Uh, I'm going to go for skilling. Not a skerrick. There was not a skerrick, Speaker. And, um, and Speaker, I just want to point out this job, the one they cut, the one that they didn't factor in if they were going to be in government this time, it has created more jobs, Speaker, just this program alone, than the LNP did in the entire time that they were in government, Speaker. They don't care about jobs, they don't care about people, they don't care about skills and training, Speaker. So forgive me when the opposition leader patronisingly calls our announcement a good start, Speaker. Just spare me. Just absolutely spare me, Speaker. Speaker, the Premier always says that the best wealth, form of welfare is to give a person a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will yeah. always back Absolutely. Queenslanders when it comes to jobs, and skilling Queenslanders for work is going to help us do just that, Speaker. Yeah. Mr Speaker, I call the member for Everton. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Premier. I refer to Labor's $4 billion shrinkage of its infrastructure budget <laughs> and ask... <laughs> members to my right... <laughs> members to my right... The House will come to order. The House will come to order. <laughs> yes, it is cold weather. I call the member for Everton. <laughs> order, members. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Premier. I refer to Labor's $4 billion shrinkage of its infrastructure budget and ask, where is Labor's plan to build new social housing that Cairns desperately needs? Uh, the Premier, you have two minutes to respond. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I might uh, encourage the member for Everton to think about the terminology that he's <laughs> using in uh, his questioning. Um, I don't know who wrote the question. Maybe it was Jared. But, uh... Uh, correct titles will be used, Premier. Correct titles will be used. Oh, sorry. The member for Kawana. Yes. Yes. Did you write the question for the member for Everton? Uh, through the chair. Yeah, Comments will be directed through the chair. <laughs> Order, members. Pause the clock. Uh, will, will there be an answer to the question coming anytime soon, Premier? 
I call the Premier. Um, Mr Speaker, what I'm going to say to the member for Everton is not too long to go until the budget's delivered. Yeah. Yeah. And there will be a great announcement when it comes to housing in this state. I call the member for Cook. Mr Speaker, my question is of the Minister for Tourism, Industry, Development and Innovation and Minister for Sport. Can the Minister provide an update to the House on how many potential workers have registered for the Work in Paradise initiative and is the Minister aware of any alternatives to assist North Queensland tourism industry to secure more workers? I call the Minister for Tourism. You have one minute to respond. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, and I want to thank the member for Cook for the question. I know how passionate she's been about supporting tourism operators in her uh, electorate. And, and the Palaszczuk government's economic recovery plan, including holiday dollars, as I mentioned earlier, and our Good to Go campaign, is encouraging more holiday makers to visit the far north. And the tourism recovery is, really, uh, is actually re revealing a, a perfect storm. Because the shortfall of around 4,000 tour tourism workers in the outback and on the coast from Mackay to through to North Queensland has really been revealed. And that's why we announced our $7.5 million Work in Paradise program. The distance can be a barrier to taking up a job in paradise, so we're offering a, a $1,500 sweetener and a $250 uh, travel uh, cost uh, uh, support as well. Uh, Work in Paradise has struck a call to job hunters, though, Mr Speaker. I can report that two weeks from the program's opening, 14,320 have registered their interest in a slice of workplace paradise. Half are Queenslanders, half are interstaters seeking an outback or tropical North Queensland working adventure. The Minister's time has expired. The period for question time has expired. I call